Nowadays, drawing has no value. Drawing has no worth. The only institution that makes people draw, insists that people draw you know, for two weeks, are in the army. If you decide to kill people, you're a sniper. You volunteer to murder strangers. And you go, oh, that's me, I want to do that. And they send you off for a drawing course because it's that one, it's the, f the most effective way of teaching someone to see what they're, not, what they're not looking for. I've put aside a day for drawing and really anything that catches my eye is subject matter. So I might not even get very far even stand on the doorstep and suddenly this so-called boring view or something that I've seen all the time, I'm also saying I want to look at this as though I've never seen it before. I might not do the whole journey because I spend all the time just seeing a, maybe a, a reflection in a puddle or maybe it's a the shape of the roofs, or, or maybe it's a person sitting there. So I've got that sort of business of just doing something very quickly. So I might have a little sketchbook, or I might have the, you know, the folded sheet. And the folded sheet is something which is, uh, which is like a map, really, because you've got a big sheet of paper which you, which you fold up and then you make the, make the drawings in, in sections, or you can fold it up and make a bigger drawing across it, and then only when you come back at the end of the day do you um, know what, see what you've got. And then it can, make, it can be sometimes an interesting configuration or, or not. This corner here, where my studio is, is the northeast corner of Soho. They, they, the, the cliche is it's lots of little villages. Well, it's, it's not so much a little village, but it's little areas. And uh, every area of London has its poor on the, on the east. And this is the northeast corner, so all the flotsam and jetsam gets washed up into this corner. And this is one of the reasons I'm here. Because otherwise you wouldn't get, how could an artist afford to have a, a place in this, in the, right in the centre of town? We like to be complimented on what we do. It's the difference between pride and vanity. You know, we like to take pride in the, in the work we do, but that isn't always reflected in the opinion of the world, and that's vanity. The opinion of the world comes in the realm of vanity, and pride comes from inside. Now, I don't mean that one should be proud in the sense of arrogance, because if you become arrogant, then you become blind to experience, because I mean, this is about sensitivity to things. It's when you have the sensitivity and the power. Again, the power is to see, is to see into things and see behind things and see the kind of, where the play of appearances are being constructed and where it's kind of just is real. And that's what, that's what power is to me. It's, it's not something that's invested in one from outside according to a, a society's structures but is this sort of something that you feel. I mean, the moment I lose my power, the moment I become arrogant or revengeful. Wow! You're thinking you'll get it this way? Go down to um, you have to teach yourself really how many how many ways of seeing can you invent all the time.
you know, I talk about superficial things, but always it's what I'm interested in is things that are going on through, underneath what you, underneath the surface. You know, Fernando Pessoa says, you know, I walk down and I look to the left and I look to the right and I look sometimes I look behind me because the world looks very different that way. Right? Well, this is good. Have a look at it. Nice splash. Nice splash. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. The way we see things, either things we want to grab or things we want to avoid. feel the surface. They sense whether something is hard, shiny, smooth, rough, the texture of things. artistic is about making connections or anything creative it's about making connections and not and not the standard bog standard connections you know so like this uh, rings that bell you know finish end of story an ability to cut out the person that is waiting to break your concentration. The majority of people you're just left alone, but there is someone who hovers around. And they want to start a conversation. And curiously enough, it's often those people that say, oh, I do this myself. Yeah, well, if, if you do it yourself, then leave me alone. Because when they start, you never know quite if you've got a well, you've got a nutcase there. What I'm looking at is what's in my frame. When I say nutcase, it's somebody that is so egotic, you know, so self-absorbed that everything must come to them. So of course if kids come up and they want, they're interested in the drawing or interested in the pen or what I'm working, and I know they're not wanting to interrupt what I'm doing because they're asking a specific question. Are you on TV? Or something? Well, you're on TV. <laughs> yeah. In London, kids go to school, they mix. That's why the city is interesting to me. All these different peoples and beliefs have to get along together. And so you have this thing that the enmity is suspended. 